You're listening to State of Arrest with South Florida criminal defense attorneys William R. Moore and William Dorenzo. Today we're going to talk about leaving the scene of an accident in Florida. Hit and run. Bill. How are you? How's it going? It's going. It's going. <laughs> we get a lot of calls on, on hit and runs, right? And they vary in all levels of uh, severity, penalties, ramifications. Hit and runs are popular, I think. Um, I, I think it's... Uh, Sometimes it's almost the natural thing when you get into an accident, and especially maybe when you've done something that you shouldn't have done, that it's like, oh, and you just kind of take off. And then after you think about it, it's like, well, maybe that wasn't the best thing to do. What do I do? Do I go back? Do I still go? And then they call us to figure things out. You, you get a little leeway. You have a little bit of room, if you will. You drive down that street to an extent yeah you know to where you can reasonably you just a reasonable amount of distance you can turn around park the car yeah. and then you have have got some obligations depending on exactly what transpired don't you yes and depending on the officer sometimes they'll give you a little bit more leeway than other times um, sometimes if you go down that street um, sometimes that's good enough for them but sometimes they'll if you go and as long as you come back but within a reasonable amount of time two three four five minutes they'll be hey no problem it's okay and they won't hit you with leaving the scene of an accident what's left up to officer interpretation translates a little bit different on the police report doesn't it I mean oh, the yes. police officer yes. <laughs> Yes. Doesn't it though? Yes. Yeah. You know, if they think that you're fleeing, or if you just get the wrong officer, yeah, yeah, um, the description is going to be oh, you know, drove away in a clearly sped. Sometimes they look pretty loop. bad. Right. Sometimes they look pretty bad, and then when you talk to your client, it's like wow, it doesn't read that way in the police report. Sure. Uh, but, but what, what do we get most of the time? We have somebody who was involved in an accident, but. They didn't even realize they hit someone, which doesn't really fly because it doesn't take more than a little tap on a vehicle, and you kind of feel everything, Yes, don't you? And I I think the way that the law reads is that you either know that you hit someone or you you know or you should have known that you hit someone. You should have known. So if you feel that little tap, it's like, hold on, what was that? That's kind of the obligation that you have as the driver to say, hold on, what was that? And if you see a car behind you pulling over, it's like, maybe it was that car and you're supposed to pull over too. There's a huge dent in a Ford F-150's fender and uh, I didn't feel anything. I didn't, Got it. You know, I thought, you know, I heard somebody yell, no, you smashed into a Ford F-150. And even if the person in good faith really didn't feel, it's a minor scratch or a tap with some type of damage, if they should have known, it's not really, may not be a successful defense. Yep, exactly. Now, uh, more often than not, somebody's involved in a hit and run, leaving the scene of an accident, parking their vehicle, not much damage. They either get the tag, uh, drive off, make a model, and uh, they get a they get a, a card left on their door, provided they're not there from a detective, don't they? Yes, they'll get the tag, and then they will run the tag. They will find out where the registered owner lives, and they will come to the registered owner's house, try to talk to the registered owner, and say, what's going on? Your car was involved in an accident. But you need ID, don't you? You got, have to put, have a wheel witness, very much like in a DUI. Oh, yeah, that's huge, absolutely. And, and that's one of the main things is usually if the cars are involved in an accident, especially if one's in front of him and he doesn't stop, they never see the driver. And all they have left is the registered owner. And if they have the registered owner, they're going to come and try to push on the registered owner to either get the registered owner to admit that they were driving or to get the registered owner to give up who they lent the car to so they can move on to the next person. Right. They make contact. The detective makes contact, Mm -hmm. downplays it. No DO probably didn't think that you you didn't realize this, but apparently you tapped someone's car. They saw you Mm -hmm. and uh, called us. So... um, uh, but uh, you were driving the car, right? And then they got the admission. They've got the wheel witness. Without it, what do they have? No case. They, they've got nothing. Yeah, you've got it. they got nothing. No case. Yeah. Did you recently have, a, have a, a, a situation where detectives were trying to find the driver of a car? It wasn't the registered owner that was, was driving the vehicle? It was not the registered owner. So they were trying to push on, push on the registered owner, push on anybody that they could get into contact with that knew the registered owner to try to give up the name of the driver. They had a description of the driver, but they just had no idea who this person was, so they couldn't even put together a photo lineup for the um, victim, so-called victim, to pick somebody out. So they had no idea. They couldn't do anything. Sure. Yeah. 
I, I know I had one. I've actually had a couple of these where there's a description of the vehicle. The vehicle's located in a parking lot and um, contacts made with the, the driver or is known to drive the vehicle, whether they're working at a business or registered owner. And um, the, the, the person said, well, I have been at work all day. I didn't drive anywhere. What does the officer do? Walks up to the vehicle, puts his hand on the hood to see if the engine's hot. Sure, now, right. now you've got to, you know, being deceptive and there, there's an arrest. Yep. Right? For sure. sure. Um, you know, what, what, uh, what's your experience really when it comes to these? these if it's a simple accident, someone doesn't have a, a, a record, a criminal lawyer, and, and there's been an identification. Uh, Sometimes you can resolve these things without there being an arrest, a notice to appear, and yes. it winding up in the court system. Yes, when it's like you said, when it's a simple one and it's just property damage, meaning there's a there, there's a fender bender, there's a dent on the side of the car, there's just property damage. Um, it's still a misdemeanor. It's a second degree misdemeanor that can't that, that carries a sixty day maximum. Um, if we get into the court system, often we can re- resolve those very favorably to the driver, especially if there's no prior record or not. Um, but you know what? One thing, going back one second, and one thing that um, ha- has been brought to my attention a couple of times by clients is, what do you do if you get into an accident or you strike a parked car, you know, in a parking lot or something like that? It's like, what do they do? And they don't know that there are certain requirements. And most of the people say, oh, look, I, I-, I left the note and I left my name and I left my phone number on there. Right. You can leave your picture. You can leave a video of yourself. Yeah. You can, uh, you know, have us. Uh, Somebody standing there with a, a, a in a clown suit saying how sorry they are, but there's another obligation, isn't there, that nobody it. really knows about? That's what I wanted to talk about. And what, is what is it? What is it? It's crazy. kind of crazy. You, you got to leave your. It's like your registration or your registration number, and nobody knows that. It's right. like, oh, I left this and I did this, and I had somebody came up to me. It's like, what are you talking about? I left a note. I left my name. I left my driver's license. I left my telephone number. I left everything right there on the car, and she still got charged. And I was like, but yeah, you know, it. it they have the discretion, I would assume, to not charge that person because it seems like they did everything that they could. They did everything that they thought they needed to do. But the law requires that you leave your registration. you got to give them that information as well, I guess, and, for insurance purposes. It is in Florida going one step further and also requiring you to contact the local law enforcement yeah. and inform them yeah, as well. Yeah, so you I, leave I all think, this stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, and if you're going to leave all that stuff like you're supposed to... Uh, Call law enforcement if you're going to, to that extent. And, yes. and the reason you call law enforcement is because, look, if you get in an accident with and you hit somebody and um, they don't want to do anything about it, hey, no problem. Right. And uh, so you take off. I've seen a lot of people, t- victims, turn around and then call the police. Oh, sure. They start thinking about, ah, maybe I've got a lawsuit. Maybe I can... Call what nine one one four one one pain, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, good gosh. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I got to report this to the police. I got a sore neck. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get rich. And then so they, and so so and so and so and so got me six hundred million. You know, <laughs> I've you seen tapped that. somebody in the back of somebody's you know Hyundai, and uh, they said no problem. Next thing you know, you're being charged with. Leaving the scene of an accident, you and they it. get what? What do they settle those for? Two thousand dollars, or, or no PIP? Ten thousand? I don't even know. Right, right. We're not civil lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, those are there's quite a lot of obligations on you yes. if you get in an accident. And like like we just talked about, it's something that the normal everyday individual would not know to leave. It's like I I, I need to let them know how to get in contact with me. So I'm going to leave my name, my address, my phone number. They've got all. Just call me, right. and that's not good enough. It's not good enough. Yeah. And uh, but it is perfectly legal for there to be an accident, at least to some extent, and for both parties agree to agree to just walk away. Oh sure, yeah. yeah that, that's interesting. A- at some point, though, well, I guess parties, both parties, don't agree when there's a fatality. What about a, st- a serious bodily injury? That's that's something that raises some questions, right? Because oh, sure. if both parties agreed to walk away and one's seriously injured, law enforcement's got a, a vested interest. In fact, a, a, a right, a constitutional right to draw blood if they suspect somebody of DUI. Well, yeah, I mean, we could go there too. Yeah, but absolutely. If there is um, there is something where somebody left the scene and they're serious bodily injury, I mean, I guess people could... Technically, but usually at that point in time, we've got paramedics involved, we've got fire rescue involved. 
um, the police are going to be called by somebody because that's usually going to be some type of a serious accident. Sure. I mean, it's kind of a far-fetched yeah. scenario. Yeah. But I, even, it, I know based on you. But just, there, there are, there's one that's one level below that, and there is that could be somebody could be charged with a felony if there is injury to somebody, not necessarily serious bodily injury, but injury, just like with a with neck pain or back pain or something like that. So that one could be very plausible in your scenario where two people get together and you know there's an accident, somebody leaves, whatever happens, and they ended up finding the driver. And it's like, well, this guy had neck pain and back pain, and his arm is hurting, and now his arm's in a sling. And this guy could get charged with a felony, even if there's just damage to the bumper or the quarter panel of the car or something like that. He could get charged with a third-degree felony, be facing five years in prison, and be facing a mandatory three-year driver's license revocation on something like that. You get in an accident. The other side says no problem. Car two is what, what we say. Car two is the victim, the last victim. Victim drives home for whatever reason, decides, hey, you know, my shoulder hurts. I want to file a claim, I want to get some money out of this, whatever. I'm a jerk. Um, Driver one who was told that they could leave didn't know of any injuries. Now is faced with a third degree felony, which means education goals out the window, Mm -hmm. employment goals out the window, great job, existing job out the window. Sure. So the, the cost of legal fees dealing with the court system, right? And even though it's not the way our system works, but in a sense, charged with having to prove their innocence. Right? Yes, yes you're, right. No, so, you're right. So there's that level, some pain, then there's serious bodily injury. Yeah. yeah. Serious bodily injury, obviously, one step forward. That's when there's some type of permanent damage, permanent disfigurement to the victim. Um, and that just kind of bumps it up one notch. We go from a third degree felony, which is punishable by up to five years, to a second degree felony. Now we're punishable by up to 15 years with the serious bodily injury, and they still have the requirement of the three year driver's license revocation if you do get convicted. And then the worst case scenario, mm-hmm. of course, is the worst fatality. Case scenario is if there is a fatality, yes. And that bumps us up one more level to a first degree felony, which is punishable by 30 years in prison. Um, and I think. According to the law, there's a four-year minimum mandatory prison term that you need to serve if you do get convicted of that. And then there's also the three-year minimum driver's license revocation with that also. And to aggravate, I guess, the the sentence that one might receive, those investigators, the prosecutor, the detectives are going to do everything in their power. Because what are they suspecting? They're not only investigating that you left the scene, but they want to know where you were because they're assuming that the reason you left the scene was because you were impaired by drugs or alcohol. And if they can present that evidence, which they can, let's Mm -hmm. say at a plea or sentencing hearing, they will, and and it is a significant sentence. Yes. Is it not? Yeah, sure. That's th- those are huge. I mean, those are really huge. I mean, there, there's truthfully, there's not much difference between a, a, a leaving the scene of an accident with property damage, where you know you're charged with a misdemeanor and you can get out of there almost unscathed to a leaving the scene of an accident with death. I mean, it could just be one reaction or a curb being close and one car hitting a curb and going over a curb or a guardrail and go. It, it, I mean, there, there could be very little difference between a misdemeanor and a first degree felony where you're looking at 30 years in prison. And an accident obviously involves more than just hitting another car. It could be hitting someone on a bike. Sure. Anything like that. Yeah, good point. Uh, very good point. Right. And Pedestrian, it, anything. People panic and they take off. I've seen it time and time again when, had they stayed even in the event of, of a, a, a death, a fatality, and if the person, car one, is driving is not at fault, right? Their insurance company covers, there's not an arrest, there's no exposure. Yeah. And very rarely do the civil attorneys go after someone's personal assets. They want that quick insurance money. Sure. Right? Yeah, I mean, it, it could be as easy. E- even if you do, unfortunately, if you hit somebody on a car or a bike or a go pet or a scooter or whatever it is, and unfortunately, if they die, if you stay at the scene, you may be charged with simply a traffic ticket. You know, you could get out of there with a traffic ticket. Whereas if you leave, you could be facing a first degree felony. It, whereas if you leave, and you had been drinking and you just panicked and made a oh, sure. poor, poor, poor decision, very poor decision, and you're convicted, you're facing prison. Oh, yeah. At least four years. Four-year minimum mandatory, yep. 
and of course there's sometimes there's ways around that uh, but you know another time but uh, sure, there are options there are definitely options for everything that you are charged with and faced with bill thank you so much thanks for your fun. insight thank you always fun You've been listening to State of Arrest with South Florida criminal defense attorneys William R. Moore and William Dorenzo. Join us next week for more talk on criminal defense.